Here's a quick video for Cormel who was having some issues with mashing up two pieces of, of armor. You can call them armor, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, sorry if I sound a little congested, getting over sick. Sorry about a uh, cluttered desktop. I'm in the middle of doing quite a few other mashup projects myself. Okay, we're going to start with the jacket here from Christina's closet and the Robert's body. All right. First off, we notice the scene root and scene root. Scene root is the, the base of the model that the Gamebryo engine says, okay, this is a, a, a thing. You have to have a, a scene root for everything. But an item can't have two scene roots. So what we're going to do first is right click or yeah, left click on the block that we want, in this case, the whole model itself, the jacket. But notice that it is not the scene root because the scenery actually includes all the bones and stuff that you see here. So we're going to click on the jacket and make sure that's what we're highlighting and right click and say block copy branch. Then we're going to go to the Robert's body and we're going to select and then right click on the scene root, not on the body because if you see the body, it is not the scene root and you, you would be then creating a second scene on the original model. You can't do that. You have to make sure that you've selected scene root and we're going to hit block, paste, branch. And when NIFScope is done doing its thing, OK, it comes out. And notice, it, it named it by default scene root, because when you, you paste branches, it, it gives them funky names. That's a no-no. That should cause your game to crash, although Cormel was saying that it just wouldn't show up in the game. That's, yeah, that, that, that won't work at all. So we're going to right-click and say enter string index. You can put anything you want to in there. You know, I'll put in jacket for now. It really doesn't make a huge difference as long as it's not scene root or the name of a bone or something like that. It won't have any effect on it. If it has a specific name that's supposed to react in a specific way, yeah, it'll, it'll behave like anything named that. Uh, another thing to note that I just figured out myself, you can also name it upper body if you want. And what that does is when you are in game in first person mode anything named upper body will not show up in first person view but it'll show up in third person and all that so if you had you know huge shoulder spikes or something that were, were obscuring your view in first person mode you could rename the block to upper body and it would be just fine uh, to me the model looks good as is i mean yeah it's not skin tight but it's not a big deal where where it's hanging out but Let's say for kicks and giggles, we wanted to edit that. We're first off going to give that a new name. We'll call this Joker Jacket, just because we're silly. Nef, yep, and I'm putting it on my desktop. Closing everything else up in Blender. Highlight everything, remove everything. So that we start off with a fresh view. Oh, great. Steam is active. Steam will cause Blender to crash on me. I'm going to import the model as a NIFScope file. And you can find the actual packages to install for the Python scripts and everything for this in Jonas's tutorial. And we're going to open up Joker Jacket. And the settings to use here, of course, are also in Jonas's tutorial as well. I believe there's a screenshot or at least a description of it. And Blender gets to do its thing for a while. Here's where most of the work in Blender happens. Pardon me, I'm going to open a soda can. And cover the microphone while I take a drink. Okay. Yeah, this is this is where all the time in Blender is spent is on 
importing and exporting. The actual work itself is kind of fun. There we go. Using middle mouse button, I'm rotating the view. And holding shift and mouse button, middle mouse button, allows you to move it from side to side. Not a big deal. Okay, right clicking on the jacket. Highlights the jacket, and you can see nothing is sticking through. Or another way to do this would be, you know, right click on the body. And you would see the pink outline if something was sticking through, and it's not. Well, maybe a little bit down here. That shouldn't be a huge issue. But what you can do then is hit Tab to go into a vertex text view. Hit A to unselect everything. We're just sticking through right there. Okay. And I'm going to pick that vertex right there, and just for good measure, I'm going to shift right click. All of those, and you can see now that that's purple, meaning that we've got that whole block highlighted. There's still some more that's not purple there. Okay, great. And I'm going to hit delete. Delete the vertices, and bingo, that's all gone. There's now a hole in the arm there, so if you took the jacket off, you know, you wouldn't... You'd see an actual hole in the arm. But it's not sticking through now. And if you wanted to undo that, of course, hit Control z and the bit is back. But another way to fix that would be to click on the vest, right click again, and hit G for grab. Actually, no, right click to cancel the grab. Where is our properties? There we go. Okay. Your red line there is your X axis, the green is Y, the blue is Z. So we could also hit grab on Y, hit the Y key for the Y axis, and now you're just moving the jacket on that plane. Right click to cancel until we get a better view though. Or maybe the Z. I don't know. Either way, you, you, you can edit it to your heart's content. Not a big deal. I don't think that's even going to be an issue, honestly. But... Control Shift Z to redo. Oh, can't redo it? Alright. Going back to the body. That's the easy way to do that. There is a way to also uh, border select with a, a tool, like a lasso kind of tool. Anyway, we'll get rid of that. Delete those vertices. Hit tab to go back into object mode. Then we're going to hit A to select everything. A twice, rather. And you can see that everything is selected. That way when you export it, you will export everything and not just the block we're working on. Go back to file, export as a Netimmerse Gamebryo file, and we're going to call this Joker. My fingers are funny tonight. Jacket A, because it's not the same one. We don't overwrite the original file, just in case you like that as it was, and say OK. And here we're letting Nifsco, or, uh, Blender waste our day away again.
Uh, the one thing to remember with exporting from Blender is that it's more effective and, and you end up with a better result when exporting to tell it not to keep the skin flags intact for skin blocks. So we're going to go into NIFScope a moment and fix that. And this is going to be another thing that trips a lot of people up, not only in, in doing their own models and stuff, but a lot of uh, conversions and mashups will have this issue as well. Is that they forget to set the, the, the properties back on the skin block and it won't re display the, the, the proper skin tone or face gender or skin um, texture for a character when it's used in the game. And to do that, we're going to click on the block and we're going to expand the block info and we look for the block that says TXT for texture but also has an arrow next to it because not all of them are going to have an arrow. We're going to click that. And right here where it says shader default, I double click. And I'm going to hit the arrow to bring down the drop down box and say shader skin instead of shader default. Then I'm going to double click on the shader flags and hit the arrow to bring that down. Scroll down once to get to shader flag face gen. Put the tick mark there and click off of that as well. And that adds face gen to the properties for that block. And now the model used in game, if your character had, say, you know, custom tattoos on their chest or whatever, they would show up properly instead of just using the generic skin for everybody. And if your character had, you know, African-American skin or, or a different skin tone, you use the, the face gen information to change that, that would actually be reflected on the model when it shows up in game. And then, of course, you're going to save your changes. And, you know, and when I do the skin flags, I usually just overwrite the original. Not a big deal. And that's all there is to it. So hopefully that will help you, Cormel, if, you know, initially the just the, the copy and paste the block and then renaming the block to, to being whatever will hopefully be your, your, your solution. Enjoy!